Israel is, is the most senior country who has violated the highest number of UN resolutions. Israel has always breached, even before 1791, since its creation, has continuously breached our land, our airspace, our sea borders. They have always attacked and threatened Lebanon. Unfortunately, and ironically enough, you hear of U.S. officials who say, we cannot control Netanyahu. You can. If you want, you can. Netanyahu is, is, a, is a war criminal. We are facing a fierce campaign, a relentless campaign to tarnish our reputation, a campaign uh, that is, of course, waged by Israel and its agents against us. It's well-funded. Maybe I, I know, I'm aware of uh, hundreds of thousands, if not millions of dollars spent to uh, tarnish the reputation of, of us. By, by us, I mean the Lebanese, the Palestinian, the Arab, all the uh, people who uh, Israel thinks that, uh, I mean, we, we, uh, the people that are against Israel. Uh, this uh, campaign, as I say, is well-funded, is manipulated by an army, a digital army, uh, that is operating to spread misinformation, fabricated news, and false propaganda. Unfortunately, as you know, uh, social media platforms are easily exploited. They are affecting the uh, mind of maybe, let's say, the ill-informed people, whom, many of whom are uh, semi-educated uh, or unaware of the realities on the ground in our region. But thankfully, the Indian media, the Indian mainstream media that you represent here, has demonstrated, a seri has demonstrated prudence and seriousness, professionalism. So this is what we count on. We count on your sense of professionalism, on the genuine journalism that you uphold, the standards of the, uh, the real uh, journalism that you uphold dearly. This is our weapon here. We only have the truth. Uh, among, uh, along our side. We don't have, maybe we might not have the, uh, the funds, the resources, the technology that they have, that they are using, but we have something much more powerful, the truth. And as history has shown time and time again, that truth has always a way to emerge victorious. I'm not here today to ask you to take sides to take our side. I'm not asking to take our side. I'm not asking also to represent one dimensional narrative, not our narrative. But my only request to you is to verify what you hear and read. This is very important. Of course you know this. I'm not, I'm not preaching you. But my request is to always verify what you hear and, and read. Because like I said, the campaign, the fierce campaign, the propaganda, the false news that are spreaded, are immense and are very, uh, very sinister. Investigate the history. Read, read about the history. Read about our region. If you read the, the history, you will know why, are, why we are here. Read the, the history of, of the region from the creation of Israel. I mean, how? Did you ask yourself how all this started? It started with the creation of Israel. And we know, we admit that the, the Jews have been subject to horrendous crimes and pogroms and holocaust. But ask yourself, on the hands of whom? On the hands of on where? Uh, uh, among us, the Arab, among the Arab, in the Arab region? It, it happened in Europe and on the hands of Europeans. So they are European Jews. They were killed and massacred by European Christian. This, this is how it happened. And if the Europeans wanted to atone for their sins or to correct their mistakes, it should not be at the expense of another people, at the expense of someone who, on the contrary, who helped the Jews at that time when they were suffering the Holocaust. If you read and if you know this history, this is fact. I'm not fabricating, I'm not creating anything new that, that you don't know, but I'm, I'm highlighting facts that when you read this history, when you know how Israel was created by a United Nations resolution, 
1947-48. Since then, the, the, the region has not been at peace at all. Because this mindset of expansionism of Israel, of, of bloodshed, of occupation, has led us to this point, unfortunately. October the 7th, what the events of October the 7th did not start on that specific date. It started 70 years before that, 75 years before October 7, 2023. It started, like I said, with the continuous occupation, with the continuous threat of the, to the neighbors, with, um, with bloodsheds. Israel has never, you know that Israel is, is, might be the only country in the world that doesn't have definite borders because they, they're not satisfied with, with their borders country. They want to expand, expand, to come to the uh, dream of greater Israel. Look, we are in 21st century. We are living in the 21st century, the era of uh, artificial intelligence. And then those uh, people, or the, the government, they believe, or the society as a whole, they believe in myths <clears throat> and twisted doctrine, religious doctrine, since 2,000 years ago, and even 3,000 years ago, that the chosen people, the promised land, these are all, all false, all falsehoods that we should be aware of and we should fight. These are the, the ideology, this is sinister, this is the ideology that led us to the world. It's not the people who fight for their freedom, who fight for their land. This is, this is not true. They tried, this is the campaign I'm talking about, they tried to, <coughs> I'm sorry, <clears throat> they tried to prescribe that every freedom fighter or the people, the Palestinian people are terrorists because they are fighting. They are not fighting just for the love of the fight. You know that even the people who, who attacked on October 7th, 2023, they attacked on their occupied land. 70%, I think 70 to 80% of Gazan population are people who are displaced from, from occupied territories. So when they attack, they attack on their land, they attack their home, they, they, they attack the people, the settlers, who occupy their lands. And by the way, there is no unarmed settler. All settlers are armed. I'm not saying that they are a uh, legitimate target, but I mean, this, this also forces news that they are peaceful people, they are living in peace. No, they are not. They occupy the, 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 the land of, this, of these people and they drove out them out of their lands, of their homes, so, and, and they humiliate them every, every day. They, they were living in hell. And you know, of course, this <clears throat> statement that's always, say, always said about uh, Gaza, that they, are, they live in an open prison, the biggest open prison in the world. And it's true. For, 15, for 17 years, if, even if I, I want to get some whatever, matchbox to Gaza, you cannot enter it until you get the permission of the Israeli authorities. And I come here to, to Lebanon. Since the creation of Israel, we have suffered six or seven major wars from Israel. And what for? No, it's not that we, we, we provoke Israel. It's the other way around totally. Israel, since its occupation, like I said, they, don't, they, don't, they didn't recognize their borders. They wanted more. They, want, they, they, were, uh, they wanted the, the land of Lebanon and the water. You know, Lebanon is rich with rivers and water. So this mindset of expansionism has driven Israel to occupy, they occupy all their neighbor land. You know, in Syria, they occupy the Golan Heights, in, in Egypt, the Sinai Peninsula, in Lebanon, the southern part of Lebanon, Jordan, the West Bank, Palestinian and Palestine, the, the Gaza. So they, they, didn't, they didn't leave any land around them, but they attack it and they occupy and they uh, express their aggression against it. So wh when you do this, when you investigate history, when you know these basic facts, then you come to know, you come to answer this proper question that's always in your mind. Who is the aggressor and who is the occupied? Who is the, uh, the terrorist and who is the freedom fighter? Because this question is always there. The terrorist is a terrorist or a freedom fighter. I think occupation is terrorism. And Resisting occupation is fighting for, for your freedom. So we are here today 
to discuss the devastating impact <coughs> of the brutal Israeli war on Lebanon, as, as mentioned in the invitation. A subject of immense importance, not only to us as a nation or as, as Lebanon, but also to the world, because as you know, war is contagious. And when any part of the world is uh, on fire, then the rest of the world is not at ease. I invite you today for an open and candid discussion. Let's engage in meaningful exchange of thoughts. I encourage you to ask the tough questions, ask whatever you want to ask. I have no restrictions on, for, for any question. I might not answer all questions, but you can ask whatever, whatever question you want. <laughs> and I'm sure that together we can contribute to better understanding of the realities on the ground. I thank you again and warm, warm welcome to everyone, each and every one of you, to the Embassy of Lebanon. Thank you. And I also want to thank uh, my dear friend, uh, His Excellency Ambassador Fabian, for his attendance. Thank you, Excellency. And a big thank you to each and every one. Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, the floor is open. You can raise your hand. Yes, please. Hi, I'm Munoz Sandhya. I work with Nauharaj Jain, Sixth and Millennial Newspaper of Cancer. Thank you. Let's say repeatedly claim that Lebanon is under siege by the is not uh, properly ensured by implement by Lebanon and international community. That's why this war, because the resolution also mentioned disarmament of the whole army. Thank you. The, the famous 1701 resolution was issued uh, in 2006 after again another uh, devastating war of Israel on Lebanon. Uh, this resolution uh, ended the war and uh, it it didn't exactly, as you mentioned, that uh, ask for the disarmament of Hezbollah. It created, again, not a buffer zone, but a, a, a zone that, uh, that all militias would withdraw from that zone, <coughs> behind that zone, and also the Israeli uh, uh, arms and, I mean, the, the aggression of Israel would stop, the hostilities would stop. This is what happened. Who breached the, the 1701? This is a good question. Who breached the 1701 was Israel. Again and again, Israel has always claimed that Lebanon is breaching this uh, 1701. And the, the history shows, history of the United Nations shows that Israel is, is the most senior country who has violated the highest number of UN resolution. And the irony is that Israel is itself created by a UN resolution. But then again, it's the country that has violated the highest number of UN resolution. Never they disregard any uh, United Nations resolution, including 1701, if we are talking about that. Israel has always breached, even before 1701, since its creation, has continuously breached our land, our airspace, our sea borders. They have always attacked and threatened Lebanon. Uh, we are always under the threat of Israel. So yes, again, of course, when, you, when this uh, resolution is breached, of course, I, I don't claim that Hezbollah did not retaliate. They, they did. But this is how it happened. And now, uh, from this place, I, um, I announced that, I, uh, yes, announced that uh, my government has announced many times uh, their uh, intention to and acceptance to implement 1701 fully by all its items. But then again, 1701 to be regarded, it needs all parties to regard it. Uh, Excellency, I'm pretty uh, independent journalist. I want to know how do you see the killing of uh, uh, Sinwa? Uh, I have not, uh, no, uh, not much information about it. It only happened last night. But uh, I said it once that Gandhiji said, you can kill a revolutionary, but you can never kill the revolution. So the cause, there's no cause in the world that is confined to a single person. Through October the 7th was a result, not a cause. October the 7th, what the events of October the 7th did not start on that specific date. It started 70 years before that, 75 years before October 7th, 2023. It started, like I said, with the continuous occupation with the continuous threat of the, to the neighbors, with, um, with bloodshed. Israel has never, you know that Israel is, is, might be the only country in the world that doesn't have definite borders. Because they're they not satisfied with, with their borders, country. They want to expand, expand, to come to the, 
a dream of greater Israel. Look, we are in 21st century. We are living in the 21st century, the era of uh, artificial intelligence. And then those uh, people or the, the government, they believe, or the society as a whole, they believe in myths <clears throat> and twisted doctrine, religious doctrine, since 2,000 years ago and even 3,000 years ago, that the chosen people, the promised land, these are all, all false, all falsehoods that we should be aware of and we should fight. These are the, the ideology, this is sinister, this is the ideology that led us to the world. It's not the people who fight for their freedom, who fight for their land. This is, this is not true. They try, this is the campaign I'm talking about. They try to, <coughs> I'm sorry. <coughs> they try to prescribe that every freedom fighter or the people, the Palestinian people are terrorists because they are fighting. They are not fighting just for the love of the fight. You know, the, even the people who, who attacked on October 7, 2023, they attacked on their occupied land. 70%, I think 70 to 80% of Gazan population are people who are displaced from, from occupied territories. So when they attack, they attack on their land, they attack their home, they, they, they attack the people, the settlers, who occupy their lands. And by the way, there is no unarmed settler. All settlers are armed. I'm not saying that they are a uh, the legitimate target, but I mean, this, this also forces news that they are peaceful people, they are living in peace. No, they are not. They occupy the, 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 the land of, this, of these people and they drop out them out of their land, of their homes. So, and, and they humiliate them every, every day. They, they were living in hell. And you know, of course, this ma <clears throat> statement that's always, say, uh, always said about uh, Gaza, that they, are, they live in an open prison, the biggest open prison in the world. And it's true. For, 15, for 17 years, if, even if I, I want to get some whatever matchbox to Gaza, you cannot enter it until you get the permission of the Israeli authorities. And I come here to, to Lebanon. Since the creation of Israel, we have suffered six or seven major wars from Israel. And what for? No, it's not that we, we, we provoke Israel. It's the other way around totally. Israel, since its occupation, like I said, they, don't, they, don't, they didn't recognize their borders. They wanted more. They, want, they, are, they, were, uh, they wanted the, the land of Lebanon and the water of Lebanon. You know, Lebanon is rich with rivers and water. So this mindset of expansionism has driven Israel to occupy, they occupy all their neighbor lands. You know, in Syria they occupy the Golan Heights, in, in Egypt the Sinai Peninsula, in Lebanon the southern part of Lebanon, Jordan the West Bank, Palestinian and Palestine the, the Gaza. So they, they, didn't, they didn't leave any land around them, but they attack it and they occupy and they uh, express their aggression against it. So wh when you do this, when you investigate history, when you know these basic facts, then you come to know, you come to answer this proper question that's always in your mind. Who is the aggressor and who is the occupied? Who is the, uh, the terrorist and who is the freedom fighter? Because this question is always there. The terrorist is a terrorist or a freedom fighter. I think occupation is terrorism. And Resisting occupation is fighting for, for your freedom. So we are here today to discuss the devastating impact of the brutal Israeli war on Lebanon, as, as mentioned in the invitation. A subject of immense importance, not only to us as a nation or as, as Lebanon, but also to the world, because as you know, war is contagious. And when any part of the world is uh, on fire, then the rest of the world is not at ease. I invite you today for an open and candid discussion. Let's engage in meaningful exchange of thoughts. I encourage you to ask the tough questions, ask whatever you want to ask. I have no restrictions on, for, for any question. I might not answer all questions, but you can ask whatever, whatever question you want. <laughs> and I'm sure that 
together we can contribute to better understanding of the realities on the ground. I thank you again and warm welcome to everyone, each and every one of you to the Embassy of Lebanon. Thank you. And I also want to thank my dear friend, His Excellency Ambassador Fabian, for his attendance. Thank you, Excellency. And a big thank you to each and every one. Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, the floor is open. You can raise your hand. Yes, please. <coughs> Thank you. The, the famous 1701 resolution was issued uh, in 2006 after again another uh, devastating war of Israel on Lebanon. Uh, this resolution uh, ended the war and uh, it, it didn't exactly, as you mentioned, that uh, ask for the disarmament of Hezbollah. It created Again, not a buffer zone, but a, a, a zone that, uh, that all militias would withdraw from that zone, <clears throat> behind that zone, and also the Israeli uh, uh, arms and, I mean, the, the aggression of Israel would stop, the hostilities would stop. This is what happened. Who breached the, the 1701? This is a good question. Who breached the 1701 was Israel. Again and again, Israel has always claimed that Lebanon is breaching this uh, 1701, and the history shows, the history of the United Nations shows that Israel is, is the most senior country who has violated the highest number of UN resolutions. And the irony is that Israel is itself created by a UN resolution, but then again, it's the country that has violated the highest number of UN resolutions. Never they disregard any uh, United Nations resolution, including 1701, if we are talking about that. Israel has always breached, even before 1701, since its creation, has continuously breached our land, our airspace, our sea borders. They have always attacked and threatened Lebanon. Uh, we are always under the threat of Israel. So, yes, again, of course, when, you, when this uh, resolution is breached, of course, I, I don't claim that Hezbollah did not retaliate. They, they did. But this is how it happened. And now, uh, from this place, I, um, I announced that I, uh, yes, announced that uh, my government has announced many times uh, their uh, intention to and acceptance to implement 1701 fully by all its items. But then again, 1701 to be regarded, it needs all parties to regard it. Yes, pretty. Sorry. Uh, Excellency, I'm Preeti, uh, independent journalist. I want to know how do you see the killing of uh, uh, Simba? Uh, the latest I have not, uh, no, uh, not much information about it. It only happened last night. Uh, but uh, I said it once that Gandhiji said, you can kill a revolutionary, but you can never kill the revolution. So the cause, there's no cause in the world that is confined to a single person. True persons, people are perishable, but the true cause is always there. It never dies. So, uh, Sinwar is not the only leader of Hamas who has been killed. He's maybe number five, you know, since the establishment of, uh, of Hamas. But I'm sure that the Palestinian resistance will go on because they have the right to resist occupation, they have the right to live in dignity, they have the right for future, they have the right for their independent state. Thank you. Yes, please. Yeah. Yeah. I am Mekitesh Ramakrishnan uh, from the IDEM. It's a multilingual portal having content in English, Malayalam, Hindi, and Tamil. Uh, so, we have listed uh, the aid that you got from several foreign countries. Uh, uh, what percentage or what portion of your actual requirement does it mean? This is for me, me. That one. The other two is what are the expectations from the US election? Do uh, you, you think that you will get more support if one of the other wins the US election? Thank you for this question. The uh, humanitarian aid has, you know, has flooded to Lebanon since the uh, aggression started. We have uh, thankfully great friends in the world. 
Uh, one of them is India, of course. On top of them is India. India is our good friend. We enjoyed uh, very good relations, excellent relations, since maybe the independence of both countries dated 70 or 80, uh, more than 80 years uh, back. Um, India, even before asking, has rushed to uh, propose humanitarian aid, and uh, we are uh, already uh, planning, and it's, it's in the process, but because of the disruption of commercial flights, uh, it has been delayed, but India has uh, offered Lebanon 30 tons of medicines, which are uh, on their way, as I said. And also, all, all political supports. India has always been supporting us. We have been exchanging good relations in the international arena. So uh, that's the, uh, the, the answer for the first part. Uh, for the U.S. election, I prefer not to comment because I don't know, you know. Uh, the U.S., um, unfortunately, is, uh, is the uh, strongest uh, ally. Not ally, I would say, or even the sponsor of Israel. <laughs> Uh, uh, USA is the only party that can stop Israel from its aggression, and they can uh, put this, the, an end of all this madness going on in the, in the region, or this crazy war. But then again, they are, they are funding Israel, they provide them with the latest technology, latest weapons, <coughs> weapons of mass destruction, of nuclear weapons. But then you, you hear, um, I mean, uh, unfortunately and ironically enough, you hear op US officials who say, we cannot control Netanyahu. You can, if you want, you can. Netanyahu is, is, a, is a war criminal, and I'm not saying this uh, emotionally. Uh, the International Court of Justice and uh, International Criminal Court has issued the warrant against Netanyahu because they said they have credible uh, proofs that, that he committed uh, war crimes. So he's a war criminal, but still he's the spoiled child of the United States, of the administration, and uh, I don't know, I mean, I hope uh, whatever the, the result of the US, the U.S. election, that the new administration would, uh, would be brave enough to say enough is enough, uh, enough of killing people by U.S. aircrafts and U.S. weapons, enough of uh, destruction, and enough of war. Let's, let's build peace. Yes, please, yeah. Hello, oh, Ambassador Ali, as you say, from the New England Express. I just have one question. Uh, do you feel that the Arab world is also somewhere let down the Palestinians, considering that uh, Palestine has a border with Egypt and Jordan? Couldn't they come to the rescue of the people there so that the casualties would have been much lesser than they were? I wouldn't say this. No, they, they put their efforts. The Arab world has been, like I said again and again, since the creation of Israel has been on the, on the side of the peace. They have always been calling for peace. I remember here the, uh, I remind you of uh, the 2002 Arab summit in Beirut, in my, my, capital, um, my capital city. Uh, there was a, a summit, famous summit, historical summit, that for the first time, all Arab nations, 22 Arab nations, they said we are ready. They, they put on the table a peace initiative saying that we are ready to recognize Israel and have and establish with it uh, diplomatic relations and normalization with Israel. On one return, a, a Palestinian state gave the, the, the Palestinian the right for a state. And this is not a grant from Israel. It's the same, the same decision that created Israel. Uh, the partition of Palestine uh, stipulates a, city, a state or entity for, for Israel and another Arab state for the Palestinian. But the whole world now is calling for a two-state solution, and one country only is against it, and it seems that this country is above all international law, above the, the international will, the international community will, and that's why we, we don't see the Palestinian state exists. So the, the solution is there, it's easy, and the Arab has, has put all the efforts to, uh, to, to create, to solve this, uh, this problem by the two-state solution, but they failed. And like I said, if, if the United States cannot control this Frankenstein monster whom they create, created, then how can the Arab do? But again, we have the will to uh, go for peace. We have the courage because peace needs uh, courage. But it seems that Israel doesn't have this will or the courage to go for peace. Yes, please. Yeah. Um, good afternoon. I'm Sergeant from Salman newspaper. Nice to meet you. I have recently been to US and the general feeling in the Americans is 
whosoever supports Israel will win the election. So do you see if the next month, one month will be very difficult for you people because they will be supporting Israel? We know that, so yes, you are right. Trump, both of them have You are right. So feeling in the American media. True. Uh, the Israeli lobby is, is one of the strongest, if not the strongest lobby in the U.S. This is not a secret, and it's not a secret that they control the media, they control uh, some very high positions, they control the, the banking system and the financial institutions. So, yeah, and, and we, we, we don't mind, actually, uh, whoever comes to power, we know that they are, we are not asking uh, for the impossible, we're not asking to disown Israel. No, I mean, it's, it's their, uh, their decision, it's their sovereign uh, decision how to, to choose allies or who to sponsor and who to not. But uh, what, we all, what we only call for is to, to pressure, to put pressure on this racist government of Israel, on this war criminal Netanyahu, to stop this war and to go for peace. Uh, th there's no way, because they have tried during these 75 years, they have tried many, many times wars and invasions and occupation, and they led to nowhere. The only way is peace. Peace is the way. Yes, please. Yeah, sorry. <coughs> please, you. Yeah. So we'll take everybody. Any copy of the Hindu Two questions. One, we have seen a bunch of helicopter attacks from Israel on the UNIFIL, right? the UN force. is supposed to, you know, the guardians. So, how do you see that in the sense? Has the UN itself kind of been blunted in many ways? As you said, you also observed an observation that even resolutions have not been adhered to by Israel. But this now we are talking about the interim force itself, not just resolution. Two, India gave a, a very nuanced way, or rather, if I would say, a blunt response, a short statement on beautiful per se. So, how do you see that? Has that do you find that wanting or a rather subdued response? No. Thank you for this question. The, uh, this attack, uh, the deliberate and direct attack from the Israeli forces uh, on the UNIFIL is not new. Again and again, uh, Israel has always been, like I said, disregarding uh, the United Nations itself and the United Nations agencies. You see what the sharp and uh, humiliation of the, uh, uh, Netanyahu himself and uh, his foreign minister against the uh, uh, UN Secretary General, uh, and they put, they put him on blacklist. I can't imagine, I mean, the Secretary General of the United Nations is put on blacklist from, and, and banned from entering Israel. Uh, this can give you, uh, dear journalists, the, the idea of the nature, the aggressive nature of, uh, of Israel. They, they, are not, they are not willing to listen to any voice, to any voice of truth or to, to a criticism. Uh, yes, Israel has attacked UN, and unfortunately, also a few months back, uh, another Israeli uh, uh, attack on the United Nations happened, and unfortunately, uh, we lost an Indian UN staff, uh, Colonel uh, Waibab uh, Anil uh, Kale, or Kale, right? So, also, uh, this Colonel uh, Mehesoras in peace uh, lost his life providing uh, humanitarian aid to the victims uh, of the Israeli war, he lost his life by an Israeli direct attack. Uh, this only shows the disregard of Israel to the United Nations, to the international community world. About the Indian response to this, India has uh, joined the letter which criticized the, uh, the, this attack. Uh, and they, they issue a statement. I, um, of course, we, we call upon them. We, we know that they are putting pressure. I, I'm in touch with, uh, with my Indian colleagues and with Indian authorities, uh, particularly at the Ministry of Eastern Affairs. And we call upon them always to, uh, uh, to put more pressure uh, on Netanyahu himself and his government to end this war. India can, because India has uh, this strong presence uh, globally, and uh, since India is a peace-loving country,